She is a New York Times bestselling author, or you may have been to her fantastic venue in Queens called QED. Please give it up for Cambry Cruz. I grew up in a deaf family. Uh, my mom uh, was born hard of hearing, but she went to deaf school. My dad is deaf. My grandparents are deaf. My aunts, uncles, pretty much everybody in my immediate family is deaf. And this usually prompts a lot of questions. So I'm going to go ahead and answer the top three FAQs so you guys can all stop thinking about them. Uh, so yes, uh, number one, yes, I know sign language. That's one. Uh, two, I know how to talk because I'm not deaf. <laughs> And number three, no, I do not know Braille. I can't, I don't. <laughs> do you, <laughs> you can just take that menu right back. Uh, <laughs> I, actually, another question, not as frequent, but I do get quite a bit is, oh my gosh, was your house quiet? I bet it, your house was so quiet. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It's the opposite. Deaf people have zero idea how loud they are. So they're burping or farting. It's a little embarrassing. They're banging pots and pans, slamming cupboard doors. It's a fucking madhouse. And let's just say Saturday morning cartoons were constantly interrupted with mom and dad's uh, sex sounds. Yeah, uh, for a long time I thought the, um, the theme song for the Smurfs was la 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 Oh, oh I love you crazy! Oh, la. <laughs> it's not, it's not. <laughs> Papa Smurf, why do you do those things <laughs> to mamas? Um, but uh, actually having deaf parents actually came in handy as we got older. And we started, you know, sneaking out of the house, which sneaking out of the house was just walking out the front door. <laughs> bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. See you later. Well, <laughs> we're leaving. But we just, did, you know, don't slam the door. You kind of just uh, would gently shut it so as not to shake the trailer because we lived in a trailer on stilts. So we'd walk on our tiptoes and just gently shut the door behind us as we walked out of the front door. Uh, <clears throat> so, um... Whenever I wanted to lose my virginity, it came up that I just had to sneak out the front door to go meet my ride. Uh, see, the day before, my mom had explained to me what the rapture was. And she was talking about Jesus is going to come and he's going to leave everybody behind or take everybody with him if you're not saved, blah, blah, blah. Just the rapture. And I, she was so earnest in her description of it. I thought she meant, like, tonight or tomorrow. This was happening. It was imminent. So I had not planned on dying a virgin. I was going to change that very quickly. So I called up my brother's older friend, David. I was like, hey, dude, can you do this for me? He's like, where, where, where do I go? How do I sign up? And I'm like, just come down to the driveway. Just turn off the lights. Because lights are also a way to wake up some deaf people. So it's just like, turn off the lights, but you can keep the engine running. Honk when you get here. <laughs> Like I hear a, uh, uh, I'm like my rides here go out and uh, we do the deed. Now uh, I was 13. Uh, yeah, that's I believed the rapture. My mom, yeah, very very young, way too young. <laughs> and needless to say, David did not know how to please a 13 year old. He was we, we, and we were baked. We got baked and hit the back of the Buick before we did it. Um, so I, from that point forward until I started having sex at a more normal age of like, you know, 15, uh, I, I, uh, I took matters into my own hands, sorry for the bad pun, <laughs> sorry. Um, by using my mom's back massager. I found a, a back massager, got a lot of use out of that and her copy of Nine and a Half Weeks. And then I, sh I got so much use out of it that I shorted the, the back massager. Now, we lived in the middle of nowhere. There were no, resources were scarce and we were really poor. There was no way for me to get another back massager. So I used the ingenuity of a prisoner and I was like, let me Frankenstein this thing. I'm gonna fix you, my baby. My <laughs> so I took it apart and I used my mom's soldering iron 
because she had a soldering iron because she builds helicopters for a living, my family. Uh, so I used her soldering iron to Frankenstein this thing back together, and in the process of doing so, I splashed melted metal onto my thigh. Yeah, I still, I actually was looking to see if I, you could still see the scar, and it's barely there. It's kind of like my scarlet letter, you know? It's just an M for chronic masturbator. <laughs> but uh, it did work again. Uh, now, now, that was the, one of the first of three sex toys that I'd really had, and I loved it very much. Um, but then my second one, my, my uh, first husband got it uh, for me for Christmas as a Christmas gift on the Lord's Day. I got a vibrator from him, and then we promptly separated, and I went <laughs> and moved in with this theater couple that I knew from the community theater. And it was cr the holidays, Christmas time, and it was our first time being separated. I was um, uh, living in Ohio. My family's in Texas, so I was lonely and depressed and sad about losing this marriage. And but uh, then I remembered, oh, I got, I got this vibrator though <laughs> for Christmas. Let's crack that bad boy out. And the theater couple was at uh, the theater because the man was playing Daddy Warbucks in Annie, and so they were at the theater and gone for the night, I thought. And so I got the vibrator out, started putting it to good use. And that's when Daddy Warbucks comes home and starts yelling drunkenly, bellowing down the hallway. Hey, where's my little elf? What's my little elf in there doing? And in the meantime, the thing is like rattling and I don't know how to turn it off because lesson kids always read the instructions. <laughs> Didn't know how to turn it off. So I'm like fumbling with it. It hits the hardwood floor and goes chasing after it and he's knocking what's my little elf oh never mind i'll come back later daddy warbucks is going night night <laughs> oh yeah it cracked and it broke and so i didn't have another one again until my second husband current husband how do you got the, the, my husband <laughs> my, my now husband um, got me a dildo not for christmas maybe i don't know maybe it was just a uh, because, because he loves me. <laughs> but he, it was the most giant thing I've ever seen in my life. It was like a little premature baby size. <laughs> like, what the, this thing? Uh, uh, and it, and it, it, was, it was enormous. And it was blue. And I was like, what the, what on the earth are you, what is this all about? Uh, what are you thinking? I'm not getting smurfed with this thing. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> so, but I'm not, I'm not getting smurfed with it. Um, it's too big. I'm like, what were you thinking? And he's like, well, it was, it's dishwasher safe. And, uh, well, he, he had lost perspective. I guess in the store, all the dildos lined up. They all started to look normal-sized. And he was like, that actually was a small one. And I'm like, all right. And, but then why blue? And he said, well, the others, they look too real. And I didn't want you to think of another. <laughs> like, oh, God, man. <laughs> you don't get it. Oh, you don't get it. <laughs> But now I'm, I'm in the care of this little premature giant dick. <laughs> well, what do I do with it? I, I don't, and I traveled a lot, so every time I would go on a trip, I'd be like, what if the plane goes down and they have to go through my things and my mom's gonna see this giant blue fucking dildo in my drawer? So I would like wrap it in a garbage bag and put it inside another garbage bag so if the plane went down, they'd throw out the trash. No one would be the wiser, right? That's a good idea. You should totally use that if you ever have to leave your house, yeah. Um, but, okay, so why didn't I just throw it in the trash? Well, because we've lived in our apartment longer than I've lived anywhere in my life, and our super uh, Gustavo Tejada and his wife, <laughs> Patricia, they go through the trash and sort the trash all the time with their daughters that help them. And their daughters, I've known little Apollonia and Jessica since they were itty bitty babies, el bebes or la bebes. Uh, and I'm like, I am not having Apollonia find out about sex because she finds this giant premature smurf looking dildo thing. And I'm like, uh, mama, uh, por, por que eso azul? 
En, uh, um, el hombre mm, tiene un complejo. He has a complex. That's what <laughs> okay. I'm so Spanish speakers. <laughs> Uh, how was my accent? Was it, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> uh, muy bien. <laughs> Wait, is that Spanish? Yeah, that is. Okay, whoa, Jesus. <laughs> See what happens when you get to be 46? Anyway, so now, okay, I'm not throwing it in the trash. I don't want my super's little darling daughters to find a blue dildo. So what do I do with it? So I did what most women want to do to penises, peni, and I, I took a butcher knife to it. <laughs> Yeah, I got a butcher knife and I chopped it up into tiny little tiny penises and I just like dispersed it all throughout town like, like little sprinkles in all the trash bag cans around New York City. So, all right, well that's my story. Have a happy Smurfy day to you. Yum's the world. 